new species of tardigrade dropped, and not only that, but we learned a lot about how they're so resistant to radiation. There's actually about 1,500 species of tardigrades, but only a handful of them are really well studied. So with this new species of tardigrade, they blasted it with 200 to 2,000 grays or gamma rays of radiation and learned a lot about how they're so resistant to radiation. For context, a dose of about 5 grays to the human body, all of it together, would start to be lethal and 10 grays we'd be dead within a few hours. After getting blasted by this radiation, 2,800 genes in the tardigrades, which is a lot, they have 14,000 total, got upregulated and expressed more, like TRID1, which creates a protein that's great at repairing double-stranded DNA breaks, which happen as a result of gamma radiation, and one that they got from bacteria through a process of horizontal gene transfer, which is so cool, that creates pigments called beta-lanes that are super antioxidants, and they clean up these reactive chemicals that get made as a result of radiation. It turns out that's actually 60 to 70 percent of the harm of radiation therapy is those reactive oxygen species. Um, and so by cleaning up those, uh, it protects the tardigrades. And then they took these beta lanes and implanted them into human cells in a petri dish, and the human petri cells could withstand far more radiation when they had these inside of them than when they didn't. Of the 14,000 genes that tardigrades have, about 30% of them are unique to tardigrades, meaning we haven't found them in any other species yet. So they're going to be a font of useful discoveries for use in figuring out how to make uh, our plants and maybe ourselves more resilient, given how resilient tardigrades are. If you enjoyed, follow and check out my weekly newsletter. The link is in my bio.